Greetings from downtown Cleveland, Ohio. Today is Tuesday, July 26th, 2022. It's a beautiful 78 degrees here in the downtown area. And the reason I say beautiful weather is because the sun is not out too brightly and the wind is blowing slightly. See the little bit of clouds in the sky. I know it's blue skies over there, so you would think like, well, shouldn't the sun be out more bright? But when you take a look around, you can see the sun is being blocked out right now by the cloud there. So that makes the temperature feel a lot better. No, no like sticky humidity feeling, so that's a good thing as well. As we walk past some of the green space at CSU. But today we're just going to do a lunchtime walk around downtown Cleveland. It's been a while since we've done a live stream in the downtown area, so I wanted to check out just some small new developments. First thing we're gonna do is head toward the Playhouse Square area. They're supposed to be debuting a new feature at the U.S. Bank Plaza, sponsored by Playhouse Square District and the Downtown Cleveland Alliance. When we get a little bit closer to that, I'll talk more about it. I don't know if the event is going to be busy or if it's going to be like empty where no one is really attending it because I don't know how well publicized it is. I saw it over the past week on Twitter being promoted and Playhouse Square District used to have it so hopefully that can clear up soon. signal seems to be getting better as we get away from East 18th Street. You know, we almost always walk on the Playhouse Square side of the street, so why don't we cross over and go on the Lumen side of the street for once see how that looks I can already see one slightly new development that I don't recall and at the lumen there's actually a tenant here first national bank so a bank has moved into this property I assume they're open already but maybe they're just Getting ready to open. And it looks like I do see the ATMs already in there. Bank branch itself doesn't look to be open though. So maybe that's still a work in progress. And then they have maybe, I don't know, one or two more storefronts that could be utilized. Sibrio Italian Kitchen. I ate there once. 2014, I think. Could have been 2013. One of my colleagues was departing their position. So they're going away. Lunch was held there. Pretty sure I had some form of a pasta dish. As this is the Hannah building we're passing now, along with Starbucks on the corner and we're approaching the GE chandelier all right now we're getting 
right up to East 14th where U.S. Bank Plaza is. So the events that they were promoting was called pop-ups at U.S. Bank Plaza. And they were saying that it was going to happen every Tuesday and Thursday from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then again from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. So that was a pretty big chunk of time that they were committing to this new uh, new little event and they were promoting it by saying that they're going to have live music and games it looks like there's a fair crowd there that's because more the majority of the music you listen to be talking about killing and drilling and dealing, you know what I'm saying? I'm willing to bring forth them. That's what I'm on, you feel me? So I'm just bringing forth them vibes, you know what I'm saying? To let my people know some good vibes out here, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we're going to do racks on you. Yes, yes. Can you play that? I ain't going to lie, females out there, even males, man. Who wants somebody to spend some racks on them, man? Who think they deserve it to somebody going to the ball and be like, baby, get what you want. This is yours. The world is yours. Who want that feeling? I know I need that feeling, man. I met somebody like that, too. I ain't gonna lie to you. And I wrote this song, man. I was, I was just, it's just like appreciation. Like, I appreciate you. If you show me love and loyalty, you know, and give me the proper consistency and reciprocity, I'm willing to do whatever to make you smile. That's why I wrote this song, Racks on You. entertainment. I don't remember these uh, benches here too. Before they would have different types of seating. The ones that are over here on the left. I think the burger bar is still open as well. Or maybe not. No. I guess the burger bar there is not open. I don't know if that's ever reopened since the pandemic. Continue walking down this street until we get toward Progressive Field. Maybe I'll see if the signal's good enough there. I think this is a new store, 1942 Tacos and Tequila. Cool signage outside the store, or outside the restaurant. Well, let's, let's get a picture of that. I'm pretty sure that place just opened within the past month or so. I like the flowers that are dangling from the street lamps. Little touches like that can make a world of a difference in livening up the street. Especially in an area like this where you have a string of parking garages in a row.
There's where they do the sports radio shows for Q104, 92.3 The Fan, Star 102, and one other station, 98.5 WNCX. You know what, initially I wanted to walk by Progressive Field to showcase the new mural with Satchel Paige, Frank Robinson, and Larry Doby. But I'm wondering if they're going to have it blocked off because I'm thinking there could be an Elton John concert coming up somewhat soon. Well, I'll still head over there and see whether I have access to it or not. But my plan is to possibly check out that mural there. And then I want to walk toward Public Square, see if they're doing the food truck exhibit there today. Take a look at some artwork near the Cleveland Public Library. I don't know if I'll have time to go by the free stamp, but if I do pay homage to the artist who had passed away recently. See a great weather day. How come there's no patrons or bars there? can't only be popular when there's a Guardians game going on, right? But yeah, let's see if we have access to the, I think it's Boulevard Avenue, or maybe it's the street after that. I already see one truck over there. A few weeks ago I mentioned these signs that Downtown Cleveland Alliance is putting up throughout the city and also promoting the hashtag DTCLE, do stuff in real life, coffee, lunch, happy hour, say less, downtown hits different, and ghost your couch. I like that one. That one's been my favorite one when I see it. Ghost your couch.
let's see if we can get through. There are on Eagle Avenue. There's like one, two, three, four, five vehicle or trucks. and more further on down. Yeah, I think it's gated up. Eh, you can still walk through. I was to say, I do see a barricade in the street, but it looks like you can still get through on the sidewalk here. But they, I see a crane in Progressive Field. They, that I assume it's for the Elton John concert. I'm assuming that that's taking place before the Guardian's next homestand. But yeah, a couple of months, I don't want to say a couple months, but I feel like it was over a month ago. Over by the ticket window, by the left field porch, they had put up a new mural that I thought was pretty cool and I haven't had a chance to come by it yet. But from the pictures online, the mural looked nice. There you go. So if anyone's coming to a Guardians game and you haven't seen this new mural yet, there it is. Satchel Page, Larry Doby, and Frank Robinson. And if you're a fan of the Indians, they still do have on the artwork you know, I-N-D-I or D-I-A. Not quite the full word Indians, but you can make it out. Let's get that in a picture. Again, if anyone's wondering why am I taking a picture with this, I can't take a picture with my phone while I'm doing a live stream, so just get to use those still shots for social media later on. Yeah, I assume those cranes are setting up the stage. Again, it's, the sun is out a little bit brighter now, but the temperature still feels really nice. 78 degrees here in downtown Cleveland. When I was here, I think the last time I was here was for, uh, what was going on? Why was I here last time? I don't know. There was some, some big event that I was uh, covering. I think it was the All-Star Game. I think I was here sometime after that. I'm referring to the NBA All-Star Game. You know, it was probably, uh... Opening day for the Guardians. Yeah, that's what it was. Opening day for the Guardians was the last time I was at this plaza. And the cell reception, because of all the people in downtown, was a bit 
uh, inconsistent around that area. If you're ever looking for hidden artwork, you got. Lots of artwork or pictures. Looks like they're promoting Eagle Street. I wonder if those are old places that used to be where uh, where the stadiums are now. Or maybe just other neighborhoods, Central Friendly Inn. And then there's like I assume fruits, vegetables, poultry surrounding it. An urban memorial funded by Gordon Gund, Laura Gund, Gordon Gund the third, Richard Watson, and John Graham. get up here to the next street here on we're going to turn right and probably cut through the fifth street arcades but specifically I want to make mention of one of the restaurants that was a long time Cleveland restaurant that is no longer there kind of just disappeared within the blink of an eye. If you guys have been keeping up with the latest headlines in downtown Cleveland, you might know what restaurant I'm referring to. Actually, instead of making a right at Huron, we're going to go up to Prospect and make a right turn at Prospect. Probably, probably be a shorter distance to get to the 5th Street Arcade. And there it is, it's actually gonna hit us right in the face. Vincenza's Pizza and Pasta. Like I said, gone within the blink of an eye. I tried it. Oh, it was a place my mom always talked about when I was growing up, like Vincenza's Vincenza's, when she worked down here when she was young. She loved that place. It used to be uh, located somewhere else and called Scotto's. I think she had it more when it was Scottles, but also Vincenzo's. And then I got to experience it about a year and a half ago when I was doing jury duty. I decided to go down during one of my lunch breaks and try out the pizza and lasagna. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna make sure I come back here. And then, you know, when I've been walking by it, it's it's been fine. But then all of a sudden, boom, it was just gone. Now. The signs on the outside are, this is the first time I've been by to see the signs on the outside. It does say currently closed due to staffing challenges. That makes it sound like it's a temporary thing. And there was never an official statement by Vincenza's like, oh, we're permanently closing. 
And it looks like they still have all their equipment and stuff in there, so who knows, maybe there is still some slight hope that it'll reopen, but when you look at everything online, everyone is saying that they are permanently closed, and people were posting on their Facebook page, like, oh, you know, we're, you know, sorry to see you go, you've been a, you know, iconic place in downtown Cleveland, and someone representing Vincenzo's was responding on the Facebook page, like, thank you, you know, they weren't, you know, saying anything else other than thanks, but they weren't disputing it, like, they, were, they weren't saying, oh, maybe we'll be open, there's a better shot of the inside, so... It is interesting that the, some of the signs are still up and that it does say currently closed instead of permanently. But I think Cleveland Scene, Cleveland.com also ran an article that indicated they'd be seemingly permanently closed, but who knows, maybe they're still... They, that sign does give me slight hope that they'll reopen. So let us pass through... The 5th Street Arcade. It is 12.37 p.m. right now. I've done some other walking tours through the 5th Street Arcade where I take my time and slow down a bit. Pretty pretty well crowded for the lunchtime hour. Here's that fascinating looking place, Coco's. Always uniquely decorated. Today we're just doing a cut through to get over to Superior, uh, Euclid Avenue and then eventually Superior. Lots of people out and about walking. Always uh, nice to do a feed stream during this time of day. Catch the lunchtime crowd. Oh, the sun was glaring, so I didn't even see that the walk sign was on there. So one thing coming up here is that the Gateway District recently had a beautification update. Now this encompasses several streets, so I don't know if I'm going to actually capture enough of it on here. But there's certain areas of downtown where the Prospect Avenue planter art wraps were installed. They actually passed that area up, so that is behind us. East 6th Street planters, so I believe coming up here we should see a glimpse of that. There was also some refreshed, reinstalled street furniture and the more examples of the pilot permeable pavement tree pit program. We'll see if we have any examples of those coming up here. I definitely know we have the East 6th Street planters. These planters here, an example of beautification update. If you go on social media on the Poco Traveler Twitter account, 
I believe I retweeted one of those tweets. Let me go ahead and put my links up there if you want to check that out on Twitter. In summer, you should see more examples of those beautification updates. And just as a general reminder, Twitter and Instagram, I post a lot of my pictures that don't, don't get captured in video, so feel free to check that out. Something I just remembered that I didn't include in my little note sheet, but I read about about a week or two ago, is that the Cleveland Money Museum has finally reopened for the first time since the pandemic started. But we're not going to go inside the Money Museum. I've never been inside there myself, but I don't know what their policy is on photography. I would check that at a later time, but... Yeah, the doors are open for the Cleveland Money Museum. A Cleveland landmark. Come in and see, it's always free. We're open, Money Museum safety guidelines. All guests are required to wear a mask while visiting the museum. So they are still requiring masks. Money Museum at the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland open Monday through Thursday, 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. All right, so that's good. Free museum you can come check out. I will, I will make plans probably to try to do that. One of the things I saw on social media that looked cool is they have a 23-foot tall money tree. Who doesn't like a good old money tree, right? Welcome, Sadie Lampduo. So you said, what's the plan for today? Well, I'm just doing a lunchtime walk around downtown in general, trying to cover about eight mini headlines. When I say mini headlines, it's, for example, as small as me stating that the Money Museum is now open. But I'm just walking by and discussing some of the latest new small things that one can find in downtown Cleveland, like we just walked by progressive field to show off one of the relatively newer murals that were installed. One thing I was a bit unclear on is I was searching online and there was something called Front International, and it, an exhibit that seemed like it had of artwork throughout the city of Cleveland. And actually the Tours of Cleveland Twitter account earlier today was posting that one of the small art exhibits was inside, it looked like the atrium of the old library. But that's one of those things where I don't really know if I want to walk in there with a live stream camera going because I know from past experience the security guard is like right there at the entrance but we'll take a little walk through the reading garden and look at the artwork that is presently in here and there's quite a few people sitting down which is nice to see enjoying their lunchtime hour but I don't know if this artwork is related to the Front International thing, but it looks pretty cool. And there's a couple more. Uh, 
more of the same with just the artwork. Yeah, it always makes it a nice, unique experience when they have these various exhibits featured. This is as close to your ear to get to uh, a Bryant Garden vibe. If you know what Bryant Garden is, I'm, or sorry, not Bryant Garden, Bryant Park, which is in Manhattan. Which, funny enough, Bryant Park in Manhattan is behind the New York Public Library. This shot never gets old, right? I'm not gonna walk up to it today, otherwise that would be a little too redundant, right? I can't do that in every single live stream, but I can at least walk past it. The Memorial Fountain, Brown Stadium. I saw an interesting discussion earlier this week on, or maybe last week on Twitter, where someone was debating, as, even though this green space of all the malls is cool, people are always looking for ways to continue to enhance, like is there a way you can make it a more interactive park, whether that be a variation of a playground or more artwork exhibits. And that's a tough question to answer because right now I think it's cool. I think a fair amount of people use it, but I do feel like they could make it even better, like, I don't know. One event coming up is Key Tower, which is right here in front of us. I'm not sure if it's their anniversary or something else, but... This Thursday, there's supposed to be an ice cream social being held on the patio. Maybe it's going to be over there. I mean, uh, it's by Mitchell's Ice Cream. You do have to pay for the ice cream still. It's not like a free event. But it should be a nice little gathering. I don't know if I'll pop down for that. This is the first time I will have been by the food trucks at Public Square. They are supposed to be here every Tuesday. You can see the sign over there says Food Truck Tuesday. Oh, you probably can't read it from here, but I can see it. Now, when I was at the RTA promotional event for their new app, they did have three food trucks here, so it kind of felt like a, a food truck day at Public Square. Their Food Truck Tuesday is being held 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., probably throughout the rest of the summer at least. Tomorrow would be Walnut Wednesday, so scaled-down version of the number of trucks that are here. We've got Pete's Barbecue, it looks like. Rib Tips and Fries for $10.99. Polish Boy, $7.50. Wings and Fries, $10.00.
jackpot chicken. We got the chicken truck, Cleveland chicken. So chicken, definitely a popular item or popular truck. The music here as well. Paul Christensen is today's musician. Slamming Sammy's pick it up. Looks like they're doing ribs. Fired up tacos. Oh god, all the smells of these foods are killing me. I haven't eaten lunch yet. I was planning to eat lunch after the after the live stream is over. And let's see what the last food truck is down here. Swat food truck? Soft swaft food truck. Seems to be more of a concentration at these metal trucks. I don't know what this other event is over here. I don't know if it's an event or just, it looks like it's something with the Cleveland Cavaliers, Charge, and Lake Erie Monsters. So maybe it's Quick and Loans Arena places that are promoting their various things. telling you <laughs> I think it's especially the ribs one the smell is too enticing I'm gonna walk around this side of the grass to get to the sidewalk nature girl says not too crowded where is everyone well it depends what what part of the stream you're watching if you're watching currently where I'm at it's a fair fair crowd if you're watching earlier in the live stream and just are be a little bit behind then yeah certain spots weren't as crowded I mean this isn't too crowded here looks like the Lake uh, Cleveland Monsters Canton Charge Cleveland Charge excuse me this is what I wanted to show the new Cleveland flower artwork where you can take a picture opportunity. I actually use this for the thumbnail for this live stream based on a picture I had taken last week. It's made by Dave Kreider Designs. And if you're not familiar with Dave Kreider, that's the same artist that did the CLE uh, sign that's over there with currently has the basketballs and baseballs they did repair the letter e someone had busted open the glass and all the balls had fallen out but they repaired that so that's good to go again and you can see quite a few kids using the splash pad and during the lunchtime hour they have various toys in the splash pad that the kids can use so this is pretty good liveliness going on in public square I see a few bubbles <laughs> floating my way from someone yeah, that's the. Let me get a. Maybe I can get a picture of that, even though there's people in it. I just got reminded that having looked into any updates lately regarding these concrete barriers they are still up of course as they look for even though they got funding to remove them i don't know when they're actually gonna get those out of here and put the actual bollards in 
Yeah, not quite clear with maybe the Cleveland Cavaliers and Cleveland Charge and Cleveland Monsters. Maybe they just piggyback off of the food truck Tuesday event and maybe they're here every week. Otherwise, I don't know why, like what specific thing they're promoting. It didn't seem like they were too big of a crowd around those trucks. City Lamp Duo says, need more advertising for Tuesdays in the square. Uh, I mean, it's a partial. Yeah, they probably do need more advertising. I recognize it on social media, but advertising in general could be a bit better. It's good because I'm following it on Twitter and Instagram, but I don't know how many people actually do that. But also, one of my former colleagues was telling me yesterday how Uh, downtown Cleveland even though you know people are coming down here it's still not super lively in terms of the amount of workers down here so that's why they're holding these events even if they're not well populated they're trying to get the uh, do a lot of events to encourage more workers to return to work and come downtown right now we are walking near Tower City Center, but I'm going to make a left here and show the latest artwork on the back of the Rebel Cafe. So I have a little note sheet that I try to read off of. That's why I pause sometimes to try to find my note. This latest artwork was, I think, just went up in the past week. It's called... Inverted Bliss, the newest art installation at Public Square by artist Krista Freehands. And this art will change throughout the year. I don't know how often they change it, but I feel like I at least see a minimum of like four different different artwork exhibits throughout the year. Bill Den says not to change food subject, but I find this tidbit of info of mine interesting. My grandfather was born behind Terminal Tower in a slum on Andy's Court. It was all torn down and raised for Terminal Tower. Yes, any type of uh, tidbits like that is always fascinating. 1884. I wonder how that bit of history got passed down, like because, you know, sometimes it's not easy to find that interesting genealogy type of things. Uh, the reason I paused here is I don't... I had seen these, but I hadn't paused to look at them. So that I know they're fairly recent, these advertisements that are on the outside of Tower City. It looks like they're promoting the uh, small local businesses. Although it does say a great mix of local and national businesses. But these advertisements appear to be promoting some of the local businesses that are inside a Tower City Center. Last week, when I returned from one of my trips, I showcased the new Skylight Park inside of Tower City, which has been met with mostly negative reviews. It just has not, not gone over well. I think because of the, they basically saying that they're not bringing back the old water fountain that was central to the big atrium inside of Tower City and B, just the choice that they went with, you know, all, a lot of the plants look fake and plastic and it's almost, in my mind, it's hard because I like the fact that they tried something, but it's like, you already have a really, 
you know, nice and growing public square park out here. Why why do you need like an inside fake fake looking park in the atrium? I just don't see how that is going to be the hook to draw people in. But overall the bigger problem is that they do not have uh what do you call it? They don't have enough businesses inside of Tower City to sustain any type of regular traffic. I mean, most of the national businesses that were there are gone. I don't even know if there are any left. Local businesses are uh, kind of far and few between. A lot of vacant storefronts. Yeah, when they had the All-Star weekend here, they had all the small pop-up shops in the atrium, but once that went away, it just went back to its same old self. Movie theater's not there anymore. So in my mind, all it really serves as is a big uh, hub for people to walk downstairs and go to the RTA train station. Nature Girl says, I didn't know there were any buses still going up near the old Higby building. Yeah, some buses go around the square, some go through the square. And some uh, actually go around the square partway and turn on to, toward uh, Prospect. I don't know how well of a view we're going to get through here, but see the latest construction updates for the Sherwin-Williams headquarters. It looks like they're laying the foundation partway. They haven't, I don't think they pulled, poured the full cement yet. I see some of the foundation work going in there, so that's some progress. And I'm pretty sure later this year, maybe in the next month or so, we could be seeing uh, the construction actually raise up into the air. I mean, there's something there that's raising into the air, but I don't, I don't think that's uh, the building, I don't know. That may be just be a temporary structure. Unless that's gonna be the elevator shaft, I don't know. Nature Girl also says if they want people to come downtown, they need affordable shopping like Walmart or Target. Yes, I've been, for like years, I've just dreamed of a Target being downtown Cleveland. In my mind, that would be like so cool. Never heard any rumors of it actually happening, but in my mind, it sounds like a good idea. I'm trying to think of the other downtown areas I've been to. I don't think there was one in, well, there was one in, uh, one or more in downtown New York City, but what is it in New York City? Uh, Seattle, when I went to Seattle, there was a Target in downtown Seattle. Orlando, I don't think there was one there. Salt Lake, there's not one in the downtown area. But these places, other cities do have, if they don't have a Target, they still have department stores or more prominent grocery stores in the downtown area as well. Cleveland is still really lacking that big name department store. Or they do have Heinen's grocery store, which is much appreciated and valued, but I'd like to see you know, a little bit more of that. Getting near the warehouse district right now. Even though I did a video on Superior Hill Park, I wanted to kind of see if if 
my stream connection would be good enough down there. To show that again. I remember the one time I did a did a live stream that started right near the Detroit Superior Bridge because I was walking toward Hingetown in Ohio City. The stream at the very beginning started off weak and choppy and I thought it was going to die out. But then, oddly enough, as I started walking on the bridge, the stream got, the connection got strong. Sometimes it's just intermittent. Like earlier when I started the stream by Cleveland State, for some reason, it got really weak near East 18th Street, which it had not previously done that. Trying to see if there's, looking at my note sheets, I think I covered, yeah, I covered the pop-ups at US Bank Plaza at the very beginning. Talked about the gateway beautification. Talked about progressive field mural. I didn't show Skylight Park, but talked about it. Haven't been by the free stamp. I'm not sure if I'll get back there because that's kind of going the opposite way. Connection is still holding up pretty good. City Lamp Duo says the monopolizing stores don't help locals. Yeah, if you're referring to, you know, the big, big chain store taking away from local businesses, I get that point too. But I still feel like having one type of store like that could help encourage more people to live downtown or visit downtown and then once you bring those extra people down here then I like the fact of them sprinkling out to the other locations and staying down here and eating more etc doing things like that yes I agree you can't have an oversaturation like it wouldn't be good if you had like Target, Walmart and every single department store suddenly move in because that would be overkill. Here's the Superior Hill Park that I covered in one of my pre-recorded videos last week. And mainly it's that part up there, they redid the landscaping so there's some nice flower bed areas. And then a person did, painted the mural here. This was previously just a blank and graffitied cement wall. Actually, I'm looking at, peeking at my uh, phone screen and it looks kind of dark with the shade. So let me go a little bit closer so you can see it better. But yeah, they have various modes of transportation painted on the mural here. Some nice flowers, the name of the park, Superior Hill Park. I like the color touch down there. Some signage showing like the before and after. And then I can walk up the stairs here. And this is where they have the new landscaping. It may not seem like much, but instead of it just being a dead nothing area, got a nice little landscaping there and as well over there. And then this, this area could use probably a little more rehab work on the ground itself. But the thing that I thought was cool, and I did show in my video, is this is a kind of a unique view you don't get to see of Cleveland very often. The Cuyahoga River and the flats in the distance. Oh, is that the... Yeah, it looks like the Good Time 3 is actually sitting there on the Cuyahoga River right now. Let 
me see if I can zoom in. It's probably a little too blurry. And I always, I always say to myself, like, oh, one of these days I'm going to do a video walk down near the flats, but I haven't gotten to it yet. I feel like I want to do an evening walk when I know a lot of those restaurants and flats East Bank are crowded, but I don't know, it's such a nice day and it feels like I'm down here. Maybe I'll walk around at least part of the riverside area of the flats. See if our connection holds up too. One of the bike trails that you take eventually wraps around from that direction and comes this way if you're trying to get into downtown Cleveland. There's Settlers Landing. So beyond the train tracks, which I don't think are in use because these are only uh, when the waterfront line was running. And our, our connection is getting weaker down here. Yes, Sadie Lamp Duo. I, I know you mentioned that in the comment, but I, and I uh, definitely want to check out that video. So if anyone's reading, I don't know if you can uh, click on their name but if not try to search for their video on YouTube type in Sadie Lamp Duo yeah because I want to see I you know especially if it was filmed with the recognizable Cleveland area things in it I think that would be cool to see so checking out this little artwork exhibit over here near the underpass of the bridge. I'm not going to go too far this way beyond this part. Unity Walk, it says. Originally created 1996. So it looks like George Wodick and students from, and there's a bunch of different programs on there. So it looks like it was a student art project. It's not in the best of shape right now. Like you can see the top uh, panel there has a lot of things that are, looks like have just fallen off or been removed. But you can still make out a lot of the unique pictures. You can see we appear to have multiple baseball fans here, right? I assume that's like an infield both on those two pictures so that's pretty cool if you want to come by and look at the various artworks what is this what kind of material is this it looks like just like kitchen tiles almost Let's see what these signs say. Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. Rise, reroute, renew. Underground 
combined sewers and storage tanks fill during a rainstorm. Clean, treated water is returned to Lake Erie, so just giving some facts, 11 and a half million gallons a day. Let's see where this walkway goes to. Does it go back up? Yeah, it does loop around. To my recollection, I don't think I've ever walked this specific walkway. I mean, of course I see it all the time from like where I was earlier by Superior Hill Park looking downward, but I've never actually been up close to it and walked. Lots of events get held there in the pavilion. Here's an Ohio historical marker for Moses Cleveland's capital town. I don't know, the Good Time 3 just seems like it's at a standstill at the moment. Well, if you don't get the fountain inside of Tower City, you have the fountain here. There are actually stairs that go down. I mean, it seems a little unsafe that people can walk all the way up to there, but, you know, possibly fall into the river. These are the type of things where I feel like tourists would always be especially surprised. I just don't think they can, even though they know Cleveland, should know Cleveland is next to Lake Erie, you know, because all you have to do is look at a map. I think they would be surprised uh, the presence that Cleveland has near water, that there's a nice river flowing through, paths that go near it. Not to mention all the other places I've talked about, like Edgewater in the past, or the beach. Various places on the east side that connect to the water too, and still a lot of untapped potential related to water. Jacob's Pavilion, that's what I was trying to remember what, what it was called. Looks like they're spraying down the seats right now, maybe they got another event coming up. signal got a little bit weak as we got to the end of that path. Hopefully it picks up as we curl back up. Now we're walking through the flats. This is the area, I don't want to say you should completely ignore it, but from where, where I just started walking up until the next block or so, I feel like that's the area that's still not uh, developed or open. I could be completely wrong on that. Like these, these places here, this could be open and active maybe during the evening time, but I don't know, this building on the left here is clearly not just an empty like warehouse looking thing but as you get right here and a little bit further 
that's where you jump right into the Flats East Bank. This is the Watermark Flats parking. You can see you pay $7 for a daily rate, $10 if it's evenings after 4 p.m., and then $15 on weekends. And that would be the, I think, what, the Flats West Bank? I don't know if it's officially called the West Bank, but I'm trying to think if that's where the Shooter's Arcade used to be. There's Collision Bend Brewing Company. You can see they're promoting their brewing things in the window. Alright, so even though you had the one place there in the parking lot, I still consider this part of the flats. You gotta really get up here where that white car vehicle just turned from. Basically the other side of the bridge here. If you're biking down, they have a nice bike to flats. There's a similar thing like this at Edgewater where they have a little decorative thing and a bike rack. That's nice to see. Is there are even more bike racks there and signs for water taxi tickets by the Cleveland. I assume the Cleveland Metro Parks is the one doing the water taxi stuff. And then you start going into all your restaurants that are down here. Lindsay's Lake House. Now I don't know what the prominence of the lunchtime hour is for all these places. All I can say from experience is that the evening crowd at these places is very very busy usually. And plus we are to be fair around 1 30 p.m. so a little bit past what would normally be uh, maybe the peak lunchtime hour. Let's go ahead and go this way. There's a place called Cocky's Bagel Sandwiches and more. And it actually is quite busy on the, when you look at the back side of that lake house place. There's Rum Runners. We'll get back to the restaurant scene, but first I want to go down here because they have a nice area where you can get really close to the river. You can see that's where we came from before. Over by that little fountain. Now we're on the other side of the Good Time 3. Well, that's where Shooters is.
If anyone watched my one bicycling video, the one time where I started in Edgewater Park, took like the kind of the trail that went from Edgewater to West 25th Street and then went through the little bit of the west side of the flats and then took the bridge that raised up and then eventually the other bridge that goes over by Wendy Park, that's, that's the bridge over there. Now there's not a way to get there from a walking, uh, at least not to my knowledge, you can't get there walking from here, but if you recall the bridges from those videos, that's what you're seeing in the background there, that thing right there. That's the one that I bicycled over. And you can continue taking this little path a little bit further down. But let's, let's go back up and show the restaurants. Rum Runners again. A lot of these places have outdoor dining options as well. Inferno. Alley Cat Oyster Bar. I think they've developed this even more since the last time I was here. Uh, actually going to one of these restaurants. Because that was probably a little bit before the pandemic started in so it's probably like 2019 was the last place last time i actually ate down here which was at the piano bar around the right so i feel like this area here was still under construction at the time i see a bus shelter over there i don't know if a bus actually goes an rta bus actually goes in here Let's see, what is this over here? Is this even more? Yeah, I don't remember these places either. So this is way more new developments than I'm even familiar with. Welcome to the farm. I don't know if that's a restaurant. WTF, welcome to the farm, that's what it says. And then Jade, New Asian, and Sushi Bar. Uh, the welcome to the farm has an arrow pointing to the right here. It makes it sound like that mu musical performance has happened at that place too. So maybe this is the entrance to welcome to the farm. I don't see hours posted. I don't know if they're actually open yet or if it's a new place that's coming. What the heck? <laughs> Inside of there I see a huge Dairy Queen sign. Larger than life and it's like a Dairy Queen logo. Oh, the Good Time 3 is moving now. Sadie Lampduo says, is that bridge that's rusted and stuck in opposition a Carnegie Steel Bridge? I'm not familiar. If you're talking with it, about this thing here, I'm not sure. I mean, they just raised it for presumably the good time three coming through. Wonder how far this walk path, walkway path, does go down. I didn't think it went as far as I'm going right now. I thought it would be cool if maybe in the future there could be some walkway that goes from there over to there and then kind of connects you to Wendy Park without having to go even more out of your way. Because it's like, hey, Wendy Park is, you know, right there. 
but you can't just cross the river. Yeah, this is this is the extent that this part goes to. So we will turn back around and check out the remaining spots in the flat, flats east bank. Uh, there is an alleyway, but I don't want to cut through there. If you go ahead and go on Google Maps and look at the history of these places. And now that I look at these stairs here, this actually looks like, and these are like rods in the ground. I feel like that they plan on making a mini musical stage here in the future. Or maybe you could put a tent or stage up and have a musical performance here and people outside. Otherwise, what would be the purpose of those stairs there, right? Maybe they plan on having some outdoor music here. Someone trying to get uh, creative and not PG-13 with the drawings there in the windows. And I don't know if this sushi place is open either. This might both of these places might be brand new. But I'm, I'm gonna have to uh, Google that and look that up. I don't see an RTA bus sign number, but inside the window here it says uh, valet. So maybe this is a place for people to wait for a valet. So again, now wrapping around to the other side there's Inferno. I think, it's, is that Dante's Inferno? Or is it just Inferno that it's called? Good night, John boy. And there's the place I've been to before. It's called the Big Bang Dueling Pianos, which is fun and vibrant in the evening with music going on. On the left side here is a land shark rooftop bar. And again, I don't want to give the wrong impression, like it looks like these places are deserted right now. These are, again, you come down here in the evening time, each of these places are going to be jam-packed both on the inside and outside, and you're going to have see a ton of people walking. That's why one time I want to do a video at, during the evening to showcase that type of environment. Here's Margaritaville, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville, and then what is on the right side here? Punch Bowl Social. something called Brown's Fit there. I wonder if that's the fancy gym that was sponsored by the Browns and opened up there. But yeah, just to give a perspective shot too. This is one of the main parking areas on the left. 
And even though you may not be able to tell it, if you just look from here, you see Punchbowl Social and Margaritaville, you can see on the back end by the actual river, there's a lot of places to eat. So this is a great nighttime vibe that people should consider checking out. There's also some more parking here if you want to park a little bit further down. But again, I think I don't think any of these lots are free. I believe you have to pay for each of them. Oh, and there's also a place here I didn't know. Truman's 216. Dogs gotta eat and drink. And you can see First Energy Stadium over there. On the left here, you've got Lago. Another place called Sora. See, I'm discovering all these other places I didn't even know were down here. And WXYZ Lounge. Some of these places aren't, I mean, as descriptive, like WXYZ Lounge. I don't know what, what that is, unless it's just the lounge portion of that restaurant. Even this over here looks like a restaurant, the 27 Club. local coffee art gallery tattoos also at this place called green light tattoos and art gallery and when you see how many people well you're taking my word for it are down here in the evening time It makes the thought of them restoring this waterfront RTA line even more enticing because, you know, you could take the waterfront line right back up to Tower City, give you just some more transportation options. Or even if you're going to a Browns game, let's say on a Sunday, during the season, which is coming up before you know it, you could take the waterfront line down, down here and not have to walk even though it's a pretty short distance from the stadium. Right now we're pretty much exiting the flats east bank i took a path on the other side of these buildings going downward now i'm just taking this street going the opposite way
Yes, Sadie Lampdu, my pleasure for trying to cover some of the flats today. I think one of the reasons I was hesitant to cover the flats at first is because ideally I would like to do more research and be able to describe things like, oh, this area used to look like this, or this used to uh, be called this, or maybe this store was down here, or this restaurant was here. And I'm not too knowledgeable on the history of the flats, still I'm not. So whenever I do a more in-depth video in the future, I want to make sure I have some more of that preparation down. There's the Nautica Queen. You got another boat coming through. So this is West St. Clair that will take back up the hill. And that's going to lead us back up to West 9th Street. So some perspective, again now you can see Terminal Tower over there on the right, so imagine where that crane is, that's pretty close to where Public Square is. Oh, I missed I didn't cover some of the warehouse district over there, but let me walk through here since there's some shade here. Again, I'm not going to talk too much about the warehouse district because I want to prepare a little bit instead I'll just walk through a bit. sign promoting the hardware industry. Oh, okay. see, so, yeah, I'm always looking for these uh, guitars that used to be featured through and are featured throughout the city. So there's one of them outside of what place is this? Camino Taco and Tequila Bar. Here's Constantino's Market. So I've heard of this place, I and from what I've read, besides Heinen's, I think this is considered the other big grocery store area in the downtown Cleveland area. So if you haven't had a chance, come check out Constantino's Market.
Let's go ahead and walk down Johnson Court here. I feel like over a year ago, someone on social media posted this picture of this street, and I didn't know where it was at the time, but I thought it was unique to see the various interlinks between the two buildings. Now, it's probably not the most scenic underground pass-through to go through, but between this interlink here and then the several that are up ahead layered on top of each other. It's the only spot in downtown Cleveland that you'll see like this, and I forgot the person who told me on social media gave me some a great history nugget about it, but I can't quite remember what it was. I feel like it was something utilizing like shipping shipping something from one end to the other. Yeah, see, that's pretty unique to have all of those outdoor spots. I should cover my nose now. Sadie Lamp Duo says our parents of Clevelanders used to drink at those on the Flats Taverns after Steel Factory shift was over. And the old end says mine also. Great grandparents and grandparents. Or go down to the pier to fish. Very nice to hear. See lots of roots tied into the the flats. Again, not, not to beat a dead horse, but one of these days I'm going to do a slow walk up and down each of these streets. Right now I'm going at a fast pace just to give a glimpse. Street lights are out here. Oh, yeah, this is a nice update. Remember that sinkhole from about a month and a half ago? It's all patched up already. Okay, but we're getting ready to end the live stream, but I want to show one more thing before I go. And it ties into, did you know that Cleveland has its very own Statue of Liberty tucked away right here? This one I did know about. <laughs> Just I've never had a chance to walk by it on one of my videos. Liberty enlightening the world. So yeah, there's a <laughs> Cleveland's version of the Statue of Liberty. So if you liked today's live stream walk, 
feel free to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, would always appreciate a subscribe. Last I checked, we were at 491 subscriptions, so getting close to a nice little 500 plateau. And we will see you next time.